Welcome back to the channel. Dane Scott from Dane Scott's Trucker's Lounge. In this episode, I'm going to show you some totally cool stuff, and I am not exaggerating. First, we're going to look at some updates that we're doing to Mint Chip here since I went to the Ashland show, and that video will be coming soon, probably the next video. I'm editing it, so uh, stick around town on that. And also be showing you another killer Peterbilt that came by recently. And lastly, I'm going to show you a totally awesome museum quality handcrafted replica that was built by a good friend of mine in Arizona and brought to me at the truck show uh, recently of the Cracker Box. We call him Lil Jack. So stick around town. Make sure you like and subscribe and keep the hammer down. Painted sky in a sunset sea Through the window of a GMC White lines and lighted signs Got me hypnotized There's nothing like the feel of a road And the smell of a diesel smoke Another 10 or 20 miles I'll be born in This thing So let's get this show on the road, shall we? So uh, back from the uh, Ashland show this weekend, which was killer, and uh, it's going to take me a week or two to get everything edited, so it'll be coming up soon. But in the meantime, look what's missing up there. Do you see that? Yeah, the visor. For some reason, uh, somebody had cobbed up a whole bunch of uh, RTV around the windshield, probably because it leaked, but... I mean, the way they did it, it was ridiculous. It was it was such a mess. I don't know why they did it that way. It must have been on the road fix or something. But anyways, got all that junk off of there, and I got the brackets off for the factory uh, visor. And here's the factory visor, but that might go on. Stay with me for a second. So here's the visor I bought, which is killer. It's got uh, it's a 13 inch drop and uh, here's the side profile which I really like over a, a bunch of other ones. And this one was on factory closeout, the way it comes, I'm sorry. There you can kind of see how the lip comes down. I like that shape a lot better than most that I see. So that's why I got it. And it also has the holes for two inch lights. And I want to put in two inch green lights. So that's kind of the plan. But at the same time, I might use the factory visor like I did on the 359. I might be able to put it up there and slant it down like that, which would look more factory and uh, unique to me, you know. Kind of like what I did with the 359. I really liked that. Um, so. It just depends on the bracketry. I was hoping maybe I could use the brackets from the, the new one to do that, but uh, I don't think I can. All right, I've just got it uh, secured, one bolt on each end, and just got it kind of sitting there. It'll have to come up just a hair to put a bracket of some sort under it that I'll have to fabricate. But what do you guys think? Do you like that old school look? I think I really do, but I just paid good money for that other one. I don't know. Decisions, decisions. So a new day brings a new look. <laughs> I decided that since I paid the money for it, I would at least put it on and see if I liked it. There's a couple marks on it I'm not happy about, but what are you going to do? They'll just say I did it if I try to send it back, so, but, uh, yeah, I kind of like that. Let's give you the typical Pete 
view that is so cool. That's it right there. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. One of the differences that I don't like between a 359 and a 379 is that the hood on the 379 has the the big wide aluminum strut, not strut, but bracing on the hood, whereas the, the 379 here has the skinnier one. So what I'm going to do, you see the tape there, I'm going to paint that silver and then I'll probably put a darker gray pinstripe at the edge just to give it a little depth look. So uh, yeah, so that when I'm looking out over the hood, it makes me happier. I'm happier with the wider race. So there we go. And you just edge it with a little dark gray pinstripe. Kind of gives it a little bit of thickness like that. Plus it dresses the edge of the paint. Here's the finished product. I'm much happier with how that looks. This video is brought to you by Brunt, transforming high-performing workwear. There ain't no flip-flops in this truck. I gotta show you a nice peat that's over here at the Wayne Dalton factory warehouse. Looks like it's a 389. Beautiful. Check it out.
it's time to show you uh, the next upcoming cool truck shows in uh, northeastern Ohio. Um, first up will be in July. We're already in July. Holy cow, it's July 1st. Man, you know, we forego the whole six months long winter thing up here just for three months in the summer and we pack it in for three months eh we're already in july all right so here we go the next show to check out is going to be at geneva on the lake geneva ohio it's called the penn ohio atca class 8 on the lake truck show now this has been going for many years now always a great show they have all uh, styles of trucks. They have um, antique class pickup trucks, tow truck, working class trucks, and um, they do some judging at that show. And that's kind of a all day deal. They registration starts like usually at eight, and I think um, they do the presentation of colors by the VFW at 11 a.m. Judge trucks from 12 to three. They uh, then they do the uh, Chinese auction drawing and drivers only drawing at 4 p.m. And then at 8.45 to 9-ish sometime, depending on the darkness, they do the Parade of Lights where they drive down the whole strip. Geneva, if you've never been to Geneva on the Lake, it's killer. It's just all kinds of shops and food and, and clubs and just it's, it's the place to be in the summer around here. So um, at the end of the night, they do a Parade of Lights right down the strip. People love it. So uh, make your plans. That is uh, July 15th, Geneva on the Lake, the Geneva State Park at the Crab, App at the Crab Apple Picnic Area. It's on Payton Aram Road. So here's the flyer. Uh, check it out. You know, you can freeze frame the uh, video to get the information off the flyer. Next up, after that, in the month of August, in Youngstown, Ohio, is the Tri-Vista classics and custom show that's at cerny motors and uh, that's been a show that's gone on for many years too and i always go to that show excellent show it's at a great place convenient there's a pilot there for fuel there's motels there's food there's everything there but uh this show will be on the 19th saturday the 19th i believe it starts at 10 and goes to three so uh make your plans there's another good one and uh of course, I'll be at both of these, so I'd like to meet you guys. Come on out uh, if you're local or within, you know, a couple hours. Uh, come on out to the show. And that address is 5751 Cerny Place. But it's right there at um, 80 and I believe 46. Yeah, State Route 46, I do believe. But look it up, Cerny Motors, Youngstown, Ohio. It's the TriVista Classics and Custom Show. And here's the flyer for that one. So, again, freeze frame your video and get the info, and that'll do it for the two shows that are the closest up and coming. So now, I want to show you the coolest ever replica of Cracker Jack the Cracker Box. Okay, so you guys all know Cracker Jack. Well, I would like you to meet Little Jack. Uh-huh. Can you believe this? This blows me away. Ray built this by hand. He started with the wheels and then built everything else by hand. He cut out everything, little pieces of, everything's metal that he cuts like with an X-Acto knife and cuts out. And then he finds little doodads that look right for the pieces. I mean, come on. Is this not crazy? Totally. Even got the patina yellow and green paint. I mean, <laughs> he was sending me pictures along the way of this. I could not believe it just couldn't believe how cool it was each piece that he was making and look at this yeah <laughs> is that not crazy I mean he even got the shift console 
so detailed. Look at the shift console. Come on. I mean, it's crazy. I just can't believe it. He did such an awesome job. The toolbox, look at this, even opens. Incredible. And I'll leave that off of there. And even the battery box is open. Look at that. He <laughs> even made the batteries in them. Just a work of art. This man is talented. Beyond talented. Look at the rain caps. I mean, right there's, right there's the real thing. Right there's the replica. Wait till you see the motor. You even made the fifth wheel work, the lever to work the fifth wheel. And here is the, the real life mud flaps. And look what he did all by hand, even weathered them. Look at the plate. <laughs> I mean, come on. I continue to be totally amazed every time I look at this. Look over there. I mean, he nailed it. Nailed it. Let's take a look at the other side. get in and drive this thing. It's incredible. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look. Now look at this. Wait a minute. Look at the horns. You know what those are, don't you? Those little poles that go on the end of a light. You know, those little chains you pull a light on with? That's what those are from. And I forget what he told me he made the clearance lights from. It was a some kind of part and then he just whittled them or ground them down or whatever he did whatever he did was his magical touch now this is uh, you may not have expected this look at the motor what intricate work he did these pieces he cut from metal and little doodads. I'm speechless. Totally, totally speechless. And I don't know if you caught it before. Look at that tachograph even. He even made the dash lines 
like I did. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to focus, guys. There we go. I mean, can you believe it? Look at this. Got it down. Even the weathered lettering. I'm sure you guys know this is a central piece in the trucker's lounge. Ray, you did an awesome job. I can't thank you enough. Words can't properly uh, express my gratitude to you, but I deeply appreciate it and I appreciate our friendship even more. Okay, that's going to be a wrap for this episode. And before we go, check it out. Here is the Wheels of Time for July August from the Antique Truck Historical Society. You really should become a member because then you'll get this cool magazine. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So, keep that hammer down, safe and sound. Thank <laughs> you.